All right, so uh, welcome. I'm Satish Goda, uh, your moderator for this session. Uh, we, have, we are very happy to have uh, 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 Nick, Gaines, uh, Will, and Sean as our, as our panelists uh, today. And we also have Ryan as our Q&A moderator. Uh, can you please all uh, come, come online, guys? Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so, um, yeah, so this session uh, and panel is about what is USD and how is it used in practice, how uh, our panelists have been using it uh, in practice. So uh, we'll try to demystify uh, some of the core uh, ideologies and like use cases behind USD. So let's start with the introductions. Uh, Nick, uh, can you? Yeah, so uh, my name is Nick Kendalbar. Uh, I'm a pipeline developer at uh, uh, Luma Pictures. Um, and uh, we, um, as a studio, we, we adopted USD pretty early on. Um, and uh, we kind of went uh, as all in as we could. Um, and we've been uh, doing movies with uh, USD as the, as kind of the backbone um, for uh, all the way through lighting um, for about three years, I think, since uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Right, thank you. Uh, Jens? Cool, yeah, hi guys, um, I'm Jens. I'm the supervising asset today from Animal Logic. Um, I'm sort of involved in, in the pipeline as a whole, but specifically focusing on uh, modeling, environments, look dev, grooming and instancing, um, and then a, a teeny bit of rigging. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's exciting to be here. Um, I've seen quite a few pipelines sort of come and go over the years, but it really seems like um, we're now at a, at a really exciting point in time. Um, I mean, we've got Epic on the panel today, so uh, everything is sort of fusing together and it's, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see. Right. Thank you, Jens. Uh, uh, Sean, uh, sorry, Will? Hey there. Uh, I'm Will Telford. I'm a senior product owner at Autodesk uh, for both USD and rigging. Uh, prior to Autodesk, I, I, I worked in production for about 17 years, so uh, a, lot, a lot of pipeline uh, <laughs> exposure there as well. Uh, currently, the team at Autodesk, uh, we're working hard on MyUSD, which is the open source plugin for uh, USD, the integration in Maya. Uh, it's our first open source project, and so we're doing all of our development out uh, on GitHub, uh, along with uh, several people on this call with Luma and Animal Logic. Uh, uh, a lot of studios are, are, are working with us on. So thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Thank you, um, Sean. Hi there, uh, Sean Dunn, uh, senior product product manager at Epic Games. Uh, been uh, prior to Epic Games, I was in production for you know 20 years. Uh, I was working at a, a studio called Original Force in China, helping them uh, integrate USD as, as part of their pipeline. And, and prior to that, I worked at Weta Digital and, and way back at uh, Alias Wayfront. Uh, and um, at, at Epic Games, the thing I'm focused on m mostly is dealing with the film and entertainment market space and looking at how Unreal fits into that market space. And USD is a big part of that um, equation. And so it's, a, it's an important um, piece of, of getting that adoption, so. Right, uh, thanks folks. Uh, so let's get into uh, the the meat of the panel. So this is uh, basically mostly a Q&A panel, uh, no demonstrations and such. Uh, so I'll start off by asking a few questions to each of the panelists and then uh, Ryan uh, will jump in, uh, like picking questions from the Q&A from uh, the session Q&A. Uh, please push a, uh, Push your questions only in the session Q and A. In the chat, we'll not be monitoring it, All right? Um, so, uh, Will, um, can you please set us uh, up the you know context for what is USD and what it is designed for? Yeah, uh, you know, at Autodesk, I'm I'm fortunate enough to get to speak with a lot of customers of of, of all varying sizes. Um, and it's not uncommon for people to be at the beginning of, of their USD journey. I've, I've had rather large customers who we want to meet, we need to meet, we need to talk about USD, talk about USD. They pull me aside and they say, what's USD? 
right? So uh, not everybody is as far along as, as the animal logics and are as deep into this, uh, you know, as, as some studios, some are still early on in the adoption. So I like to, to back it up and kind of define the problem that, that USD is trying to solve. Uh, so there's, there's three main things that I, I feel I identify as, as problems that, that USD is trying to address. So one is dealing with extremely large data sets. Our pipelines are getting more and more complex. We're dealing with these extremely large data sets. These things, we're trying to you know, create these data sets. We're trying to load them in different DCCs. We need to be able to view them, trying to navigate them in real time speeds, edit them. They need to be stored on disk in some size. They need to be transferred around between studios. Uh, the, the other thing that, that I think is a, a large problem at studios is, is enabling collaboration, right? Collaboration that happens serially or in parallel. It happens between multiple artists, uh, you know, where you have multiple animators working on one shot. It happens between different disciplines where animation is passing shots on the lighting. It happens between different DCCs. Pipelines aren't homogenous things. They're made up of very, very different tools. Uh, and, and these days, more and more, it's happening between studios where studios are going to, to share this data. Uh, and, and one of the things that like collaboration leads to is, is the third topic, which is people want to enable a more nonlinear uh, production pipeline. Right. So uh, uh, historically, I think a lot of pipelines really fall into that linear trap where work has to be done serially. Uh, and, and people really want to work in a more nonlinear way and allow, allow these artists to, to begin working at the same time. Uh, so all the studios have taken a stab at this problem. Everybody's faced this problem. Everybody's cracked, has a piece of the code. Right. Uh, and, and some people have an implementation that solves all of it for their studio, but it's not open. It's not what other studios share. It's not deeply integrated in the tools. Uh, so that brings us to Pixar's USD, right? In 2016, they open sourced this thing. Uh, so USD is an open standard and it, it, it does, it takes on each piece of those puzzle and it, it does it extremely well. Uh, it doesn't mean that USD is a panacea. It doesn't mean there aren't gaps, but it means that it is right now the most complete solution and the most promising long-term solution to addressing all these problems and others that are, that are in pipelines. Um, so defining kind of what USD itself is and how it tackles those problems, uh, you know, I think a lot of people start with a really simple mental model of a file format. They think that, okay, this is a file format that can represent geometry caches, it can represent time sample data, um, and, and that mental model allows them to think about incremental adoption. You know, I, I could swap out a Limbic or a FBX and replace it with, with USD. Uh, but it, it actually goes beyond that, right? It, it's it's beyond just a file format. It's actually more of, a, of an extensible common language, right? That it's also a, a composition engine for 3D data. Uh, and, and so what it means to be a composition engine for 3D data is they've defined ways of working with uh, multiple levels of sparse data that they call composition arcs, right? And so part of those composition arcs, it provides really robust referencing. Um, it, it leverages an extremely powerful system of non-destructive sparse overrides. Um, a, a, another composition arc they have is called variance, which is an unopinionated variant system so that you can use variance in any way you want. You can use it for LODs, you can use it for versioning, you can use it for artistic variation, you can use it for different variations, whether you have cache geometry or a Maya reference uh, buried in there. Um, and then there, there's a few other composition arcs that allow for a more complex composition of the 3D data. Uh, in the end, all that composition composes down and produces a very lightweight, highly optimized scene graph. So these things can load really fast. They're very small on disk, uh, so they're extremely efficient. The other nice thing about this, this, this language is it's extensible. And so in, in the end, um, I, I think what, what you can do with it is there's a lot of pipeline logic that everybody has to maintain. And you can actually reduce the complexity of your pipeline code by delegating some of that logic into USD itself. A lot of that composition, the way it reasons about opinions and that composition uh, allows you to pull a lot of that logic out of your code and, and let it live in USD. Uh, right. Now that, that leads to, that's only enabled through best practices, right? It doesn't enforce a certain way of working, but uh, with best practices, you, you can actually offload a lot of pipeline logic into the file format itself. Um, and, and then lastly, it ships with, um, with Hydra which uh, as someone mentioned last night, uh, it, it democratizes your render pipeline, right? And it acts as a, as a translation layer, which will connect multiple scene delegates to multiple render delegates. So in a tool like in Maya, you would have, uh, you know, the Maya data model, but you could also have the foreign scene data, mo the, the foreign data model of USD 
uh, and they could both be fed to the same uh, render delegate backend. So it's an extremely powerful kind of render translation framework. Uh, right. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, we need to move on, uh, but uh, thank you for setting the context of uh, what it is and the main, archi the main architecture that uh, you know, USD provides for us. So let's uh, now move on to Jens. Uh, so Jens, uh, can you please talk about how you use uh, USD in your pipeline and uh, where do you use it? Thank you. Sure. Um, so yeah, thank, thanks for, for the excellent overview. Um, so we're, we're trying to sort of leverage most of these aspects that, that you've discussed. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we sort of use it as our entire you know, backbone for the pipeline all the way from modeling down into lighting. I guess that's sort of similar to what Luma is doing um, by your description, Nick. And um, yeah, we've, we've also been using it for just about three years, I think, um, uh, sort of ever since open sourcing our, our USD plugin for Maya. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, we, we sort of use it uh, to, you know, to pull in all these atomic assets together that we author in, in various different, um, you know, tools and, and pipeline steps and um, sort of combine it into this, you know, USD Uber scene, um, if you will. And so to, to make that happen nicely and organized, we actually um, sort of broke our, or, or we changed our existing, you know, asset structure that we used to have that was much more sort of like organically grown and we've sort of reset it. And um, so we came up with this, this idea of um, what we call entities. So th these are sort of just like, uh, you know, USD files that have like a layer stack um, and each layer sort of represents a department, so um, or, or like a pipeline step. So um, an example would be a character which would have, you know, modeling, a look dev, uh, and then um, probably various uh, rig layers, like for the effects rigs and the, the performance rigs. Um, or another example for such an entity would be a shot, right? Like so, um, a shot would just be sort of the same thing, but instead of having a modeling layer, it would have like a layout layer and an animation layer and effects layers and lighting layers and so on. And so it's sort of just like a, you know, like a semi-procedural sort of framework for our assets. And once we had that, like it really sort of slotted in quite well with USD and we could just add layers to these things where we needed them and contribute the, the sort of data that we needed to contribute to those various different things and then reference them into each other. Um, so uh, that obviously has, has quite a few advantages, um, you know, like our pipeline now speaks a common language um, and we're sort of avoiding that spaghetti bowl that we used to have before. <laughs> Um, but it also sort of comes with a bit of, you know, um, rigidity, like you need to sort of speak that language and um, you need to fit your processes into that language a bit. So I'm just sort of mentioning that sort of as a, as a, you know, something to keep a in mind effect. and walk into this, um, mm -hmm. that yeah, now, yeah, exactly. It's a side effect and, and now you are speaking USD, right? Um, so yeah, one one thing that was kind of interesting there, which I thought might be might be interesting for people to hear, is that it's sort of inverted the way we were we were using the pipeline quite a few places where previously we, you know, had all these like tools along the pipeline that would build your scenes or gather assets, right? Like so, you would import an Alembic, apply some US, U, um, UVs, uh, you know, do something with a fur cache, process that somehow, apply to that, and so we sort of had these bespoke steps where everything was sort of just assembling assets as you went through the pipeline according to you know the task that you would have to perform um and now that's that's changed quite a bit right like generally speaking what we do now is like we load this usd file and it comes with everything um and you then choose the layer that you want to work on you set it as the added target right and, and you're targeting that while you're working with it um, and everything that you don't want, you sort of want to exclude actually from your from that pipeline step, right? So you you want to prune it out, you want to um, you want to you know mask your scene basically. And so USD has mechanisms for that, but um, it's it's still something that took us a while to get our heads heads around in some of the departments at least. Uh, um, so make, make sure you've got good payload, um, you know, good understanding of your payloads and, and extend hints because that will really allow you to sort of peek into the scene before you load it all. Um, I don't know, do I have more time, Satish, or should I? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so in, in terms of DCCs, um, you know, we, we start in, in Maya for modeling and we just sort of like model in Maya and then export and import to USD. There's not really any live connection at this point. Um, it's, it's more sort of like the traditional, you know, file format way of using USD. Um, and then, uh, you know, for, for environment building, um, we go sort of like much more into, into USD and we use our LUSD Maya plugin. So Maya doesn't really know much about what's happening um, in its scene and it's sort of really all just in USD. And we, uh, when we're editing the scene, we're targeting, you know, the USD layer content basically and, and we modify that um, live. Um, so yeah, I'd love for, for Will and the gang to catch up a bit with us there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to more, more collaboration um, once all the plugins sort of like level up. Um, in, uh, in LookDev, we, we switched over recently to um, the, the very sort of, uh, you know, fully featured, but, but still a bit sort of, you know, experimental at times, uh, Houdini Solaris um, module. And uh, so now we do all of our, um, you know, shading and and look dev um, as well as the, the grooming and instancing workflows and everything in, in Houdini. Um, right. And uh, just because I, I can see a few questions coming up about UC shade and so on. So um, if you want to talk to me about that separately, that, that'd be cool. Uh, but um, yeah, mainly we're, we're expressing our materials in UC shade now, but we're still sort of binding them in a custom format uh, to our scene, which, which is not hyper compatible. All right. Um, yeah. um, okay, I'll wrap it up. Cool. Uh, thank you so much for uh, you know laying down the in practice uh, you know use case of that. Uh, now, Nick, can you please uh, give us a specific value add you know use case you know from the entire pipeline? Pick a stage and talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, uh, the example I want to give is. Um, uh, you know, one of our first projects uh, when we started doing using USD was to um, uh, create a UI that would, uh, you know, resolve assets and set up a stage in uh, Katana. Um, so it's it's basically like a stage configuration tool um, that is was very similar to like some of our earlier tools, um, which were all you know very bespoke pipe, you know. Uh, pipeline specific, um, you know, file, you know, reading all files from disk from all different places, but because USD has this concept, a very powerful concept of like a single stage, um, you know, we were able to basically uh, create a UI that just looks at the stage and is configuring it um, in exactly what, the way you want. Um, and it, it uh, we use uh, variants pretty heavily. Um, that's kind of our, um, one of the ways we, we manage versions. Um, and uh, so we made this UI that would, uh, you know, take in a stage and configure it, select all the variants, and then basically output uh, at the end, or after a Katana node, <clears throat> um, you know, a fully configured stage. Um, and you know, that was a pretty pretty big success and, and helped us uh, switch to Katana, um, you know, pretty easily. Uh, it was like a um, and then, you know, harness all of Katana's power. Um, and uh, uh, then what happened was we, you know, we were faced with another problem, which was how do you configure, um, you know, your nuke scripts? Um, and <clears throat> this kind of the universality of USD came in where we kind of asked the question as well, you know, we could do kind of the old school way of, you know, keeping track of all of our renders and, and the database and looking them up and then building uh, new nodes. Um, or we could make, uh, we could use the same, all the same code that we use to um, take our 3D geometry and, and put it in, push it into the USD stage. And we would just, you know, kind of put some prim data on, uh, on a prim um, <coughs> and, uh, and build a 2D representation of a, of, a, of a using USD using all the same uh, API and stuff um, to create this stage that you know you can't see, but uh, it's got all the data in, uh, that you need to know kind of the state of the shot um, uh, as far as the 2D uh, layers renders go. So um, we were able to 
create this stage just just with our normal same kind of reusing all that all that pipeline uh, code and uh, then we would hook up this same UI that we built for Katana and um, point it at this stage in Nuke and um, uh, generate Nuke nodes, just you know, inspecting the stage and looking up, um, you know, there would be uh, some attribute that would point to the render uh, path, uh, the file sequence, and it would just create the read node. And, and um, you know, uh, so in this way, you, you can solve problems uh, you know, once and you can roll it in many different places. Um, and I think that that is definitely one of the, one of the most powerful things about USD is really, uh, you know, being able to um, harness this tool to solve different problems and then apply it to, uh, you know, applications and everything. It's, um, so, uh, yeah, that was, I mean, that was a, a huge success and, and a good project. All right. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, Sean, uh, like, can you explain how Unreal, Unreal leverages USD to add value to the pipeline, like interfacing with? Um, yep, definitely. Um, so uh, one of the things that uh, you know when you're when you're in the in the film industry and and you know working on on uh, different film projects, uh, one of the th big things is is the visualization of the end product, and so. Uh, one of the things that that um, you always want to do is you want to try and get your visualization as far up the pipeline as possible. So the director is seeing stuff early on and he's seeing it consistently through the pipeline. Um, and, and the thing that um, USD and Unreal enables there is if you've got a pipeline and it is a USD pipeline, um, Unreal is able to, you know, read the, 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 Unreal, uh, the USD data um, uh, into the into, into engine. It's not um, importing it, but it's just, you know, looking at a, a USD uh, file and it lets you, you know, visualize that data, you know, really quickly. And uh, being able to um, get that visualization, like I said, the, the further up front as possible and be able to provide, you know, as close as possible visuals so that, you know, when a director is reviewing stuff, he's seeing, you know, the set sort of what it's going to look like in the final and, and they're seeing, a, you know, rough pass at lighting and they're, you know, seeing if there's any dynamic effects and any of those sorts of things. Um, and, and I think that's where, you know, Unreal can, can provide a lot of value and USD makes it easy for, for that to happen. And um, the, the, the other part of it is, you know, especially in the, in the larger film um, companies and, and um, you know, they've got fairly complex pipelines and, you know, there's a lot of um, code that goes around plugging everything together. Um, being able to uh, read USD files and, and, um, and visualize them is, it makes it easy to bring something like Unreal into, you know, a, a film pipeline because, um, you know, you're, you're not having to like write a whole bunch of extra code or, or do anything to, to uh, enable it to be there. And, um, and I think that's where, like for us, being able to get that USD data in, be able to manipulate that USD data and be able to output USD data means that in the, in the past, you know, if you were looking at a game engine and you wanted to do something in film, oftentimes a game engine would be sort of the end point and it was hard to go you know, past that. Whereas you get, like I said, with USD, that's fully enabled. So if you want to do you know, final pixel um, in the engine, you can, but if you want to do final pixel in any of your offline renders or in any other space, it's easy enough to then output as USD and then use uh, the, the, you know, the rest of your pipeline to, to get your final uh, images. So. All right, so, uh, so now, I have a general question to all of you, which is uh, um, because of uh, you know virtual production being uh, used more and more, uh, you know like uh, within uh, the studio across studios. So, so you feel like USD uh, is of very good value, so that you can share all the information, including metadata. Uh, like, do you want to add to it? Uh, like how does USD help uh, virtual production? Well, the, the, like, I'll give you like a good example is um, that there's um, a lot of companies that are looking into LED walls now and they're looking at you know, projecting sets onto LED walls and getting final pixel. And um, so Unreal 
is you know used pretty heavily in that in that space. And one of the things you have is you've got you know a production company and, and that will be generating some sort of an environment, and that environment needs to then be put onto the LED wall. The um, if they are generating stuff as USB, then it's easy to bring that on you know into the wall um, and then and then display it so that. The, you know, you can start shooting your, your final images. Um, a, 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 as well, you might um, want to, a, 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 if you're in production, you might want to extend what you're seeing, you know, in, in the, on, on the LED panels um, in post. So then it's providing a way to go from the LED shoot output to USB and then go on to post production and, you know, provide whatever facilities is going to be doing the post production with those, those the USB which could be USD file, camera, you know, any animation, uh, and then they can start, you know, it, it, like working on it and adding to it and improving it, et cetera. Right. I, I, uh, Satish, oh, I, sure. I, I would say that, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at virtual production, you compare it to traditional production, uh, you know, as I was talking about USD kind of enabling parallel workflows, it, virtual production really just, it's, it's a lot of the same processes just compressed to that far end of the spectrum of everything being done in parallel. You know, you visit these sets and along the side, there's a bank, there's a, you know, this modeling artist, layout artist, and everybody's doing the work simultaneously. And they're all trying to feed everything <laughs> at, at the same time. Uh, so I, I think that, that both traditional productions are uh, leverage USD in the same way that virtual productions are. It's just, I think in a traditional production, you might have more gating in your pipeline about when and where you're pushing the data around as opposed to virtual where you need more real-time exchange of that between the different tools. But USD definitely, I think, starts to accommodate and enable that in, in different pipelines. Right. Cool. Uh, like, uh, we have like around three minutes uh, before we go into the Q&A from the attendees. So do you guys uh, wanna talk about what does future hold uh, like in general for USD? Like it, it's an open question to you, so. wants to go well I, you know I, I i might talk about a few gaps i guess i would say so there, okay. there's a lot of questions that people have going into adopting usd and um you know usd is extremely uh, uh well suited for uh you know storing data you know description right in in, in a very portable way uh as long as people don't fork the standard uh it remains portable through all the tools uh i think the the missing component is uh, the idea of, of how we're going to look at problems like portable compute. Like wh wh where does portable compute pair up against that? Because if, if we don't have that, then, then it, it just remains a data description. So I think that's one of the gaps that, that, that are there. And then one of the pitfalls I would say is the idea that you know, USD, I keep saying can enable all these things, but it really comes down to establishing best practices and industry standards. And so there are efforts underway to define what those are, but I, I think that the studios need to come together and, and work on reference assets and reference pipelines so that standards start to evolve for this data that we're going to exchange. Because there's, it's, it's like a programming leverage. There's so many ways to represent your data and it would be nice to converge on certain concepts. Like, like, uh, like especially if uh, like different studios are working simultaneously on a project and exchanging like information, so the standards uh, will play a big role and not defeat the purpose of uh, USD in the first place of sharing uh, data. All right. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, Ryan? that's absolutely true. Um, the, the other Sorry. thing I. I mm -hmm. uh, uh, one ahead, thing I, I, I'm particularly sort of excited about is, um, is, is Hydra and it's sort of like, you know, uh, representation of USD in, in a renderer, um, including, you know, real time rendering. And uh, so I, um, I think there's, there's a fair bit of work going into that at the moment, actually. And, um, you know, we're, we're pretty excited to see what, what kind of happens there uh, over the next, next couple of months a year. Because um, at, at the moment, it's, um, it can be can be a bit challenging, you know, to uh, to sort of work with USD as a live scene description in some areas, uh, in, in part due to that. Um, and so uh, that's really, to me, sort of like the next frontier for USD, if you will, um, the sort of like interactive editing workflows that that um, you know where you you're really editing your USD stage live, basically. 
Right. Well, thank you. Uh, like Nick, you have uh, any? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, we're really we're really excited about um, Hydra as well. Um, we're we're definitely excited to kind of take the take the the like final USD stage and and be able to uh, like play blast it in, at higher and higher qualities uh, early on. So we're, I mean, you know whether that's some awesome Unreal stuff or uh, some Hydra stuff or um, but. Uh, you know that's that's one of the things that we're at, we're actively looking into um, and definitely excited about. Yeah, uh, uh, Sean. If we start if, for me, if you if you go if we start looking a little bit further ahead, um, you know, I, I I look at where we are with like assets and you know in general when someone's modeling an asset, if you're making a chair, you know, it's kind of it's pretty defined now how people model stuff or characters and whatnot. And I look at USD as being, you know, a way for us, you know, sort of globally to start building more shared asset libraries. Like I said, I think I'm, we're a little bit further in the future here, but I see it as being a, an enabler in, in, in making it easy to, you know, either have, you know, libraries of assets that you're, you know, you're paying for or, you know, libraries of assets that are available to you. And, and I think it will, will, you know, when you, you, look at, at being able to quickly build out giant sets that are, you know, have, you know, many assets on that. To me, I, I see that as a, a bit of an enabler, ma making it, you know, quicker and faster to make, you know, fantastic imagery and, and um, you know, do really cool movies and stuff. All right. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's sorry, it's like we need to, oh, okay, uh, you want like, to move on? Yeah, yeah, we need to, we have eight minutes now, so Ryan. The future is exciting. <laughs> Yeah, so there's some there's some good questions. I mean, I might just tack on quickly to that question when we're talking about the future. And there's a lot of questions around like, um, you know, supporting rig data or even sort of doing like, you know, being able to swap out your Maya binary file for a USD file. Like, do we see that as the eventual future for USD, like representing all of our data formats and really truly kind of being that universal standard for everything or um, maybe not? And sort of anybody can weigh in on that one. I think that one touches a bit on what I was saying about portable compute, right? You get into things as complex as rigging uh, in, a, in a rig definition, uh, you know, you need to be able to evaluate that rig the same in, in multiple consumer consumers, right? So that's that, that's that missing piece uh, of portable compute. Whereas, you know, USD does, does take a stab at it with, with USD scale. And I imagine that that, that, that will grow, uh, but that's not supporting, you know, complete deformations. Like it's not supporting complete uh, generic compute. Uh, so I think that's going to be needed. As far as you know, file formats, uh, you know, we're constantly trying to do things to improve you know, the, the, the load times and efficiencies of the file formats that we have. Uh, I think USD, there's a lot of fantastic lessons in USD on, on ways to, to improve uh, how you can efficiently store and, and, and compose that data. So it's definitely something that we'll, we'll, we'll look at to see uh, you know, how, how we can optimize uh, you know, our, our file load uh, based on the, the concepts that we see in USD. Yeah, and I, I, uh, sorry, I, I, I agree. Um, and um, I also think that um, as time goes on, when you know, we've got these, these, these established pro processes and then we start looking at rigging, you know, there's going to be sort of a standard that will eventually hopefully come out of that. Um, you know, and I, and I know one of the things that I've been working with other um, vendors uh, of, of software is trying to make sure that, that, you know, the USD that I can consume in Unreal can be consumed in, you know, in my or Houdini or, you know, in, in other applications. And so I think it's on us, as in everybody, that we keep working together on this stuff. We keep moving it forward we don't fork it and, and go, oh, I think I know how to do this better. So I'm going to go off on my own path. Um, and so I think it's important that we keep pushing everything back into the into the the main repository and and push it forward. If we don't do that, then I, I don't see us being able to have you know rigs and and all this other stuff you know established within USD. But if we can keep pushing forward and work together, then I then yes, I see us getting there. 
And I, I think uh, one of the things that Sean was saying uh, last night was, uh, you know, uh, anim, anim curves are not in USD yet. And uh, that's something that would be uh, super powerful to have like a standard, uh, you know, good USD uh, sanctioned uh, representation for um, that we could start building uh, all the little pieces of that. Yeah, and, and, and really, like losing their, their key keyframes. They like right. to be able to move their keyframes around and not be like, oh, great, it's mocap data again. For yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know if it's okay, but can, can we plug Zigraph Talks here? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> um, I, I, I just do it. Um, we've, we've got a, um, we, we built sort of like a, um, a deformation system on top of USD. Um, that's uh, that's used in our rigs. Um, it sort of you know uh, takes takes the USD data, deforms it, and then um, passes it on to the viewport. And uh, so there's a Sigma talk on that um, called uh, USD Integrated uh, Hybrid CPU GPU Deformation System. Nice. Okay. Um, so another question related to kind of education and onboarding. Like, what struggles have you guys found? Um, in terms of getting people into the USD mindset, especially like newer artists or new pipeline people and, you know, are there good resources available or is that something we need to work on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, as the, we've, gotten, we've gotten our developers uh, pretty, pretty on board and pretty uh, versed with, with all of it, but um, I think we're still kind of struggling with uh, teaching artists uh, you know, kind of how, how USD works and how, and to start thinking um, in ways that would, would leverage, uh, you know, USD for as, as, as more than just a file format. I, I haven't pitched the, my, uh, not just a file format, but a, but a religion uh, thing to Pixar, but uh, <laughs> that's, it's definitely very powerful. So uh, I think, uh, you know, educating artists to, to start thinking in ways like that, especially um, asset artists who are, you know, building things by piece by piece and, and can build reusable pieces um, is a challenge. Yeah, anyone else want to weigh in on that one? Yeah, so we, um, one thing that we do with the TDs, sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> one thing that we do with the TDs um, uh, sort of regularly is, is play the USD glossary wheel of fortune at, at Animal. <laughs> And so, um, you know, it's like this JavaScript upload, we put the USD glossary on there and, and we spin like this virtual wheel of fortune and then we just pick a random TD out of the group and, you know, put them on the spot and try and let them explain how this USD feature works. Um, I like and, that. You know, sort of like <laughs> then try and as a group. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it works pretty well actually, um, but it's, it's the TD group, right? So. Um, how do you sort of bring USD to the masses is, is still sort of like a bit of a question mark for us as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, all I would add is I, I, think, I think the most important people to educate is the, the technical people um, because they're the ones that generally are crafting the tools that the artists are gonna be hitting. And there's a lot you can do to make tools, you know, better, smarter, easier so that the artists aren't necessarily having to deal with a ton of, of, uh, of you know, USD knowledge. Um, and so I think it's, 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 to me, it's more, more important to get them up to speed. I'm not saying it's not important to get the artists up to speed, but I think it's more important to get them up to speed because they need to understand a lot of stuff under the hood in order to make those tools, you know, work well for the artists. Hey, Ryan, uh, we have one more minute. So maybe another quick, you know, uh, like question from the attendants. Sure. Make a simple more. yes or no. One more, yeah, <laughs> quick. <laughs> we have one. Uh, I don't know if I have a quick yes or no one, but um, okay. <laughs> maybe just very quickly a thoughts on like um, performance with USD. Like, what have you guys seen? Like, yay or nay in terms of like it performs really well, or there are still some performance issues that we're working on in different areas and stuff like that. Be way of instanceable <laughs> at large scale. Um, use the point instance when you can for a large amount of instances. I, oh, yeah, yeah, right. I, mm -hmm. So I just want to say, we, you know, uh -huh. we've been pretty impressed with, with most of the performance uh, and it's been nice to, uh, 
uh, you know, kind of offload some of those more tedious uh, performance tweaking things um, to, you know, to the point instance or to, to instanceable models and, and stuff like that, that, that uh, you know, you, have, you don't have to customize quite as much. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, from, I, I, from, say, uh, okay. uh, I was gonna say, I think it's, it's it, this is where it's important to understand the structures that are, you know, that build your USDs. Um, because, you know, for example, we were testing a scene from a, a customer in Unreal and it was taking like 10, 15 minutes to load. And we looked at the way they were structuring their data and then we changed a little bit of the logic and how we were doing the load. And we were able to change it to be, you know, like a minute or two minutes, you know, so we were able to substantially change, you know, how, how that was loaded. So you do have to be, you do have to understand the underlying, you know, functions, because if you don't, it's easy to make a mistake. And then suddenly, you, you know, it's taking 10, 20 minutes to load when it shouldn't. Yeah, right. From a performance standpoint, I think USD is extremely efficient. I think USD view, you know, really shows that off. And we use that as our benchmark as we're developing Maya and pushing VP2. Uh, and, and so we know USD is a very efficient format, very performant format, uh, and, and we, we've had great successes at kind of matching that performance through uh, VP2, you know, matching, matching USD view. So we're, we're very happy with the performance of it. Cool, guys. Uh, we have reached the end of the time that we have, but uh, really appreciate you sharing your like, uh, like experience with USD and where uh, USD is uh, lacking or where uh, it can be improved. Um, please feel free to uh, like continue the discussion in, uh, in our virtual reception on the high fidelity area. So there's a speaker's lounge. So please uh, feel free to continue the discussion and uh, we look forward to what USD will bring to the industry you know, on the animation on the VFX side and improve uh, the movie making process, make it more fun and less painful. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Satish. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Please proceed to virtual reception, folks. Uh, it, it lasts till 4 p.m. Uh, you can find the link in the agenda. Thank you.